Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from thecase.com. Today we're going to take a look at the Galaxy S8 Active, the latest addition to the S8 series and also the Active series. To start with, design is very well built. The phone itself is very well built with the rugged design looking very sturdy with the bumpers and four corners, although the screws there doesn't really do anything as aesthetics. But it is mil-spec certified and is covered with IP68 water and dust resistance, so it definitely is more than ready for outdoor uses. Now let's take a look at what it packs. It has the first 18 to 9 ratio flat display in a Galaxy device. It's got thicker bezels top, bottom, left and right, and it doesn't even have 2.5D glass for any kind of added fanciness, making it not as futuristic as those with the edge panels. But in return, it's really easy to put protective films on it, and I'm pretty sure the flatness of the panel contributes to the ruggedness. The panel itself wasn't perfect by the time I received it. The color calibration weren't exactly great, and the colors on the edge were a little off than the one in the inners. So I had to fix it by the screen edge color balance. I had to make it cooler than the rest of the panel. It certainly isn't an amusing experience to do that on a $900 of a smartphone. To be fair, after I was done with everything, the panel was gorgeous. It's got great colors, uh, it's bright, the panel uniformity is great so it doesn't really bother you in darkness. To make this incredible display possible, Samsung had to get rid of the three hard mounted keys and replace them with the softer ones. And you probably wouldn't like the rear mounted fingerprint reader. I'm not a fan either, but the good news is that it's much more distinguishable than the vanilla S8 due to differences in the materials. And now let's jump straight off to the camera. You can launch the camera by tapping on the camera app or by quickly pressing the power key twice. And the 12 megapixel rear camera takes fantastic photos. Let it be bright or dark, stable or shaky. You just literally point and shoot. The results are phenomenal. Front facing camera accessible through the little swipe is really good as well. It is aided by autofocus, so no matter how far or near you are from the camera, it takes great photos, although a built-in OIS would have been definitely better. I tried that on the HTC 10. It prevented so many shaky photos from happening, but this guy doesn't have that, and the HDR performance isn't exactly the best, but still, it's a great selfie camera. Compared to that, the audio department is okay. I do like the sound equalizer, you can choose from the presets, you can choose your own, and it works globally through the entire system. And there are also neat little features like Joel Audio that plays music in two Bluetooth devices, and there's a separate app sound so you can play your music on your speaker and games on your earphones. And if you want even more options and presets, you can go ahead and install Sound Assist app from the Play Store. The speaker on the bottom isn't too bad for a mono one, but that means it doesn't have the stereo speaker in this size of a phone. That's a bit disappointing. It's somehow a bit clearer than the vanilla S8. I don't know why, maybe it's the material surrounding that, but just a bit, it's not that much of a difference. The wired audio through the bottom place earphone jack isn't terrific, it isn't terrible, it plays music just like any other Galaxy. It's Mediocre. Now, taking a look at what it packs inside, it's got Snapdragon 835 octa core processor paired up with 4 gigabytes of RAM. That combination has been confirmed by so many devices that it really can't go wrong. And thankfully enough, it didn't go wrong. Launching the app, going back home, launching another app, going back home, multitasking between them, the apps are well and live. It may not be as powerful as Apple's A11 Bionic, but it does its job without any problem. Now the software running that is Samsung Experience 8.1, which isn't exactly my favorite way of scanning Android, but they're getting better, they're getting increasingly better. I mean just look at it, icons are clean, interface is fluid, and I love the additional themes available from the Galaxy Store. Probably the only part that I'm disappointed with is that the gesture launching app drawer still doesn't feel natural, it does have noticeable lags and frame drops still after a few updates. But you would like the nifty features like fingerprint reader bringing down the notification bar, you can hide the navigation bar to use the full screen out of it and you can bring it back, lock it back again. Or when you're in full screen, you can just hard press on the pressure sensitive home button. And then there are some obvious Samsung goodies like Samsung Pay, Samsung Pest, and Samsung Cloud. And that being said, there is one part that I don't like. That is this guy right here. This is the Bixby button and of course the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus, the Galaxy Note 8 also has the Bixby button built in, but it's an additional button that you can disable it. I mean it's too bad that you can customize it, but it's a button that you never actually had in the previous ones. But this replaces the active button which has been there since the Galaxy S5 active and has been customizable ever since. Until this one that you can either totally disable or bring out Hello Bixby, Bixby Home. And even worse, the activity zone is now integrated into Bixby Home, so you have to 
tap on it to launch the activity zone. Of course, you can go into launcher, bring out the app drawer, or you know, make a shortcut out of activity zone. But when it was accessible by a single tap of a button, now it is two-step thing. But after all that, something I can't complain about is the battery life. It packs 4,000 milliamps of battery inside there. It's not replaceable, but you know, it's 2017. And it gives me eight hours and 20 minutes to eight hours and 15 minutes of screen on time. That's incredible. I'm always on LTE network, never on Wi-Fi, and I surf the web pretty hardcore. So that is the kind of number that I rarely get on the phones. And more importantly, charging that battery back up through the USB Type-C port on the bottom is relatively fast as well. It only takes an hour and 15 minutes, which is not bad at all. And wireless charging, fast wireless charging takes tad less than three hours. And now that I told you almost everything about the Galaxy S8 Active, now it's time for the verdict. The verdict is, it's an incredible phone. I, I love this phone. I mean, who wouldn't? It's got a solid performance, great camera, incredible battery, and it's rugged, well-built, and it's aided by a snappy performance. I mean, who wouldn't love this phone? Why not? I mean, I get it. If you're not a fan of this, like, maybe too masculine looking, wanting, design or the S8 on steroids kind of design, you probably wouldn't like it because the way it looks. And it is thicker and heavier, that's true. But really, it's a lot more toned down than the previous Active series. This doesn't even have a camo pattern. And overall, I believe Samsung made a perfect combination on this one. They almost perfected it. A pressure sensitive panel for glove users, a customizable big speed button, and better position fingerprint reader would make it perfect. And personally, I'm really sad that this doesn't come in a dual SIM variant. But overall, this is super well built. This is very well built, overall sturdy, fast, great camera, great audio, well not great audio, um, great battery life. This is easily one of my favorite phones of the year, if not ever. So that was the Galaxy S8 Active, the rugged version of the S8, which is a whole lot better than the vanilla S8, I think. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can meet us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.